mess I made sure it was hanging on the fridge so everyone could see. <laughs> My best friend wanted to teach me a new game. She introduced me to Sudoku. All I seen was numbers and thought to myself, why did she think a math puzzle was going to help me feel better? <laughs> but since I love her, I let her teach me. She spent five minutes teaching me and I spent hours solving game after game. I felt completely better about myself and I did not mind that she left me with an addiction. <laughs> Sudoku is an abbreviation for Suji wa Doka Shin Mikagiru, and that whole word means that a number can only occur once. A number can only occur once in columns, rows, and regions. An article posted on CNN Money stated that Sudoku's popularity is more is in more than 140 newspapers, including the Washington Post, the New York Post, and Chicago Sun-Times. Um, Sudoku has some of our even well-known celebrities addicted, such as Joanne Rivers and Neil Patrick Harris, who has stated that Sudoku is one level down from opium. <laughs> First, I'm going to teach you, um, before I teach you how to play Sudoku, I'm gonna introduce to you its history, and lastly reveal techniques and tips that you can improve your skills by. Sudoku was officially created in Switzerland, but progressed in America and Japan. A mathematician named Leonard Euler uh, introduced the idea of um, number management, number arrangement, and he used it in the Latin square. He used letters A through B, but he used Greek letters, and Letters A through B, A through C could not appear more than once. Next, you have Howard Garnes, who for some reason did not like taking pictures, but developed the modern game of Sudoku. He developed the game and he published it in a newspaper, in Dell Magazine in New York, and it allowed the game to become more popular. He placed the title for the game because no one knew what the game was called, but they just knew of it and he called it Number Place. It was published in his newspaper, and it later traveled to Japan. In Japan, it grew really popular. Everyone liked it. The Japanese coined the game with the name Sudoku, and they even added another asset to the game where numbers could now be revealed. So now with revealed numbers, the game was a little more challenging, but it was still fun and addicting. They also had an individual named Wayne Good. He was traveling to Japan one day and he went in a bookstore and he saw the game in a book and he soon got addicted. So he wanted to create puzzles of his own and he published it in a newspaper, in a British newspaper, which soon traveled back to the United States, which is how everyone in the United States now knows it. Now that you know some history of Sudoku, I'm going to teach you how to play. The goal is to have numbers 1 to 9 in each column, row, and region. Each small square is called a cell. Each reveal number is called a given. There are two techniques in playing Sudoku. The first technique is called cross-hatching. Cross-hatching is a very effective technique. We're going to start by looking at the right rows and columns. I see there's a number 9, which means the number 9 cannot be in that region, nor that column. I move on to the next column and see there's a number 9, which means the number 9 cannot go in that region, nor that column. So since the number 9 cannot go in that region, or that region, the number 9 cannot go in that column, nor that column, we look at what's left. Now we can start scanning rows, since all the columns are already scanned. I look at the first row and notice there's a number 9 already placed, which means the number 9 cannot go in that row. I see that there's a number 2 already filled in a cell, which means the 9 can go in the last cell. That's cross-hatching and it's a very effective technique. The second technique is called counting. Counting only works through the middle of the game. There's In the middle of the game, you usually have a couple cells left. In this region, you only have three cells left. I'm going to start by counting down from 9. I have 9, 8, I'm missing 7. So I can start by scanning columns 
or rows. I already see that there's no sevens in any of the columns, so I can start looking at rows. The first row has a seven, which means the seven cannot go in that row, which means the seven can go in the last cell. That's counting, but you can't start counting when you begin a game because you still have to figure out the other numbers. Now that I have taught you how to play Sudoku, I'm going to introduce to you some tips on how you can get better. You can get better through pressure, and there's a lot of places that offer Sudoku that you can practice through. You can um, start a stopwatch and record your time and try to beat it the next time. Or you can set a timer, five minutes, give or take, and finish before the time runs out. There's also other places that allow you to play Sudoku, such as websites, apps, books, and newspapers. Today I've taught you how to play Sudoku, introduced to you its history, introduced to you some of the techniques that can help you, and you have each been given a Sudoku puzzle, and I challenge you to beat me myself. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, your, um, in your introduction, your story, I can totally relate to the struggle with math. It's real. I've had two days of math from hell. So this kind of brightened my spirits a little bit, being able to like resonate with what you were talking about. I thought you had really good justification, you know, talking about the different newspapers that the game is in, and that it's a positive addiction, which is really nice, because I'm sure at times we're all fighting one thing or another, whether it's marshmallowy fudge Oreo. <laughs> yeah. I like that you gave the history because it made me eager to see the rest of the presentation. It made me want to learn how to play the game because it was intriguing. I thought you had a great speaking voice. I could hear you from back here. I didn't think that you needed to be louder at all as far as where I was sitting. I don't know if you guys felt the same way. She, she could have been a little more louder. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it, was, it was calming. Like There's a fight there. tonight. <laughs> you don't hear it tonight. <laughs> Let's see. Your slides were really good. They were simple. They were straight to the point. Your tone in your like when you're explaining on the slides, you didn't go too slow, you didn't go too fast. I was able to follow exactly what you were telling us when you were telling it to us, especially when you're explaining how to cross hatch and you went from slide to slide and the lines changed. That was really good, it looked professional. Um, I like that you also included tips for improvement and not only that, they're realistic, accessible, and even free. Through and through, I thought it was really great organization. I like how you gave us our own to play later, because I think it'll, instead of just telling us where we can do it, you actually started our addiction for us. You know, the, the first pill's free. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I don't know if you followed up from your original story in the end, but that would be my only criticism. I think everything else was really fabulous. Can I say something really quick? I know I'm not on the board. But <laughs> your your PowerPoint actually was like one of my favorites so far because you actually like took advantage of it. You didn't just like have it up there for show, you know, like you actually like used it. And you did kind of look at it, but it wasn't like distracting at all because you like looked back and you explained as to why, you know. So I, I thought that was really and you really knew what you were saying. Like you weren't like, Oh well, I just know how to play it, so that's why I did it, you know, like you actually know your stuff. Good job. 
I want to add something to America's comment. In PowerPoint, I, I love the fact that you probably only looked at it maybe two or three times, and then the rest, you were looking at us, focusing on us. And then when you were saying, um, like, the last slides on newspapers, and then it came out newspapers, and then it said... Without looking. Yeah, without looking. That was, that was very professional. Yeah. <laughs> well, since everyone...